Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you don't know me already, my name is Amanda Lawrence, and today I'm going to be taking you through my training. We are here at American Strength. This is a new gym that I'm actually training at. Really like it here. Um, we're going to be going through deadlifts and bench, and I'm just gonna kind of like take you along for the journey. Right now, I'm training for my sponsor, SBD Apparel's SBD Sheffield Invitational. It's on March 29th, and so we're just building up to uh, for the meet at this point, and just you know getting those training sessions in and trying to get stronger session after session. So I will leave details down below if you're interested in buying tickets for the event. It is in the UK, Sheffield, UK, um, but otherwise it will be broadcasted, and I'll be sure to give you some more information on that as soon as I know exact like links that I can give you, but that's pretty much the plan for today, and take you along. I ended up hitting heavier squats last night, so I'm a bit sore right now, and I forgot my sore no more cream, my tire ball. So we're gonna see how today goes. Um, we're gonna take deadlifts lighter, bench will go a little bit heavier, but um, just trying to save it for my, my primary day, my primary squat day on Monday, so we'll go a bit lighter. Um, We'll see how things are feeling and kind of just take it from there. But really gonna take my time warming up today because my legs feel like jello. <laughs> I really haven't been getting sore until these last few weeks of prep because we're really starting to push things as we're getting closer to Sheffield. And so I've been trying to like be more on with my recovery. Like last night I went in the hot tub, trying to like make sure I'm stretching more, rolling out more. But there's really, I guess, not much you can do when you're just constantly pounding on your body after a while. But I mean, that's the peaking process, right? We're trying, we're trying to put out the, the best meat possible. Like, honestly, like I know IPF points, um, which is how, like, I guess these powerlifting meets are scored right now, likely won't be the scoring system point system um, after this year, I'm hearing. But my goal for Sheffield right now is to hit that thousand point mark. Nobody has hit that. It's going to be close. And so, like, obviously, like, securing the win is going to be priority, but thousand points would be super cool to hit. So that's what I'm looking to do. <laughs> but total first over points. Just remember that, because point systems can always change, which is scary. <laughs> when I start to feel more sore is if, I'm make, if, if my protein intake isn't where it needs to be at. Generally, I recommend having at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And if I'm not hitting that amount, so like I weigh roughly 185 to 190 pounds, if I'm not getting at minimum that, I'm not recovering as well. So take that more, more seriously, because otherwise, you're going to be feeling it and it's going to take longer to recover. So that's why it's nice having that BPM protein powder come in handy. Because it's 25 grams protein pretty much in a scoop. Yeah. When my hips are really tight, I just like getting in like my sumo position that I do and I just sit down and I rock back and forth and I'll just hold it there for a few seconds. And then the other ones I like doing, this is a side from using a hip circle and foam rolling. I like doing this, like, I think it's called like a pigeon trick, holding that for a bit, both legs, obviously a little longer than this, and um, other it's like lunge stretching. So I'll take a lot of time doing this to make sure my hips are warmed up, especially for sumo, because if your hips aren't loose, the bar's gonna kick back away from you, so. Really like want to focus on wedging your hips in the bar. And to do that, you have to be, to be loose. <laughs> so right now, the world record for my weight class, 84 kilo open division, is 557 pounds. Um, and so Sheffield, this meet that I'm signed up for, you want to break these records because money's at stake, right? So like 557 is something that I can pretty much hit on any day of the week if I'm deadlifting. So like I'm really excited to see like just like how far I can push it for the meet, just because um, there's a lot of stake. There's prize money for IPF points, highest total for any weight class, which is really what I'm trying to chase for, and then also for each world record broken. So um, this meet's all about records and seeing who's really like who's the best of all, who's the greatest of all. So I'm using today as like a secondary day to try to um, save up for my heavier squat day on, on a few days from now. So um, it's just like. The biggest thing like I've learned with powerlifting is really trying to like treat one day as your primary day and one day as your secondary day so you can really make that primary day with your single. 
better, or the best it can be. So, um, so you're not feeling fatigued or anything like that. Yeah, taking today lighter. I'll hit 501 pounds for four sets of four. That's the plan, and it should be pretty easy. as I normally do. Still at the same time, not slow by any means. It's just when you're feeling a little bit, you know, fatigued. I squatted really late last night, heavy, and like ideally when you're training, it's nice to get like 24 hours apart from your last session, just so you can kind of like try to recover as much as you can, especially like for somebody like me when I'm in the gym six days a week. So definitely less than a 24 hour time, uh, like recovery time, turnaround time. So just, just do what I can. So really not, really not bad to be up in 501 pounds like for a bad day. I've had, I have this like really bad habit like my whole career, which is something like since I started working with Joey Flex, like uh, trying to break those habits. Um, like I would always go like, I would ball hard all the time. Like just like try to like keep pushing and pushing myself. I've learned that after a certain point, like you're gonna run into a lot of little injuries doing that and that could eventually drive you out of the sport. So it's about being smart about it. Um, at the same time, you know your body, you know your limits, you know where to stop. Some days are gonna be good to push it. Some days, definitely take a step back. Um, so like I, like I definitely feel like I have a better grip on balancing like this kind of thing, balancing like the fatigue, if that makes sense. And like riding that line where like you shouldn't push it because you're gonna like lead to injury, if that makes sense. And like it's also led to in the past by training that way, like balls to walls all the time, like not necessarily being peaked for my meet. Like I would peak before my meet or after my meet. So like the way this prep is going for Sheffield, I have a really good feeling about it because I'm like I'm like slowly building up to like w w what I'm led to believe is like my highest point. So like for meet day, so um, I'm really excited to like see how things go this time around because like I said, I'm doing things a little bit differently and really making sure that I'm paying attention to the details. Like it's easy to like lift for the gram sometimes and not necessarily like always doing that. That makes sense. Like you can't expect to be like Superman all the time. <laughs> the reason why I train with straps is because for some reason, like my hands always tend to rip like the calluses and whatnot. This one's like been a bugger because it's like right in the crease of my hand and it keeps opening up. So I gotta go take care of this. But strap wise, like I really like using Versa grips because I can feel like I really get like a lot of tension with them and they like grip easier than like a fabric one. Like I can't seem to get them tight. So that's why I train with those. Like I'll do like use my hands for like three reps or less. But this is the reason why why I use straps. It's just like, ow, it's just like this spot. Like it's always on my like ring finger too. Like always, it's just the way I grip the bar. like solely pretty much upper body and it's gonna be hard to incorporate your leg drive at that point so since your arch collapse your set collapse so I do really like these I have one in my home gym my garage gym so I mean but you can also like put bands in the bench or like I don't know what it's called it's kind of like the, the, the grip that you put under like those like doilies like your grandma does under lamps like you can get like rolls of that at Walmart it's kind of like I don't know what is it lattice grip or something like that I don't know what it's called but that works too And love this belt. Not the fact that I'm with SBD, because I, I bought I bought this even before I was an athlete for them, but I like it because, say for squat and deadlift, I like using these two notches. 
But for bench, I like going out a notch looser. And so with this lever belt with our patent lever system, I don't have to take a screwdriver to it to change notches. That's why I like it so much. And like, if you are in the market for a belt, I would go with a 13 millimeter, which is the max allowed in a competition over like a 10 millimeter. Lever, well, belt, you can get lever or prong, but it's just gonna be a little bit more support. And then my other trick is to size up in your belt. As you can see, I'm in like some of the last holes on this belt. I wear like a size large. I do fit in a medium, but I like getting the bigger size so it can wrap more around me, therefore more support. So that's my little trick. Max is like 17 or 18 reps. Just gonna puff out my chest for that one. Sorry, no, I've worked really hard for that. <laughs> I uh, like I do a lot of back accessories more than anything because a big back means big total. <laughs> so, so I do a lot of like hamstring accessory work, not so much quad, just because I guess you're, you you want to work the muscle groups that are that are lacking. My quads are not lacking whatsoever. Um, so I do a lot of like hamstring glute work for lower body. So I'll do like hamstring curls, either seated, uh, lying, or standing works, even like dumbbell RDLs or whatever. I'll do a lot of belt squat, like that over there, belt squat or pitch arc, whatever that is. And uh, like GHD, reverse hypers, um, all that good stuff. Then upper body, I'll, I'll really pretty much do everything. But like, I try to not do too many lower body accessories just because I'm really, I guess, Hitting those a lot just with squatting and deadlifting as much as I do per week with, with like, I guess the weight that I'm hitting those movements at. So that's like the reasoning behind that. Like really, I go pretty light with accessories just because I don't want them to take away from SPD. But yeah, that's pretty much what I do. It's a little heavy. <laughs> that's a In high school, I was like a big soccer and basketball player. Um, I played basketball through 10th grade and then soccer all throughout. I was big on like the traveling leagues and whatnot. And so after high school, I was being recruited for college soccer. I had like four offers and what ended up happening was I fractured my tibia and it was like multiple times because I kept playing on it because I just kept having like misdiagnoses. And so I didn't end up getting to go to college to play soccer. I've always been very like sports driven. I felt like I needed something to do. And so my mom mentioned like, okay, let's try bodybuilding. So that's what I did. I was a little overweight after not being able to like exercise and whatnot after uh, the whole fracturing my tibia and whatnot. So I ended up losing like 30 pounds, got down to 160 pounds. And my buddy at the gym actually asked me to try out powerlifting just because I don't know, doing like normal accessories. I might have been a little bit stronger than the average girl for the weights I was choosing. So I decided, yeah, let's, let's give it a go. So it was January 2016. He asked me to sign up for a meet. It was called Twin Ports in Duluth, Minnesota. It was June of that year. So I trained six months for the meet. And my first meet, like, I fell in love. You, you only know, like, once you, like, start, like, once you try a meet out for yourself, it's, like, the, the vibes, it's, like, the energy that you get from these meets, and that's what, like, is so fun for me and why I, like, keep training for these meets, because it, it gives me something to do in the gym. Like, after a while, like, going to the gym and doing, like, I don't know, just, just normal, like, accessory work and cardio and whatnot gets old after a while, and I think that's why a lot of people end up burning out at the gym. So, um, like I said, that's why, like, Carlson gave me something to train for. My first meet, I ended up breaking the American junior squat record without even realizing it because I had no idea what, I didn't know anything about the sport. I just kind of went into it with like, you know, the mentality, like, which is what I always like still think to today. It's, it's you versus you. Um, and like, that's the only way like you're ever going to be like truly happy with yourself. If you're going to sit here and like compare yourself to others, your numbers compared to theirs, you're never going to be content. And again, that's going to kind of like drive you out of the sport eventually. So. After that, my ultimate goal was just adding more pounds to my total. So started to take powerlifting a little bit more serious. 
and like it, it honestly started to become like a, like a second job for me. I was going to school, college full time, and I, I started posting on Instagram at first just to kind of like try to keep track of my lifting progress. But that soon then I guess became more of a page as a source of inspiration for people to you know come to to look at. So um, that's the reason why I continue like doing what I do to help inspire you guys to um, you know maybe get a barbell in your hands if you haven't tried out powerlifting or just lifting weights in general and just being the strongest person you can be and, and trying to like break the stamina especially for women that that you can't be strong like strong like. Like, is, like lifting heavy weights isn't going to make you look masculine, right? Um, so like I like to call like strong is the new skinny. So like um, it's it's really helped me like overcome a lot of things, like break the stamina that you like society like makes you like have to look a certain way, be skinny, and you know that's not it's not for everybody. And piloting has kind of like given me that and like made me a lot happier in that aspect. And I'm just hoping to try to spread the word more for all of you to come join the sport. So that's my, that's my story. What I recommend for people if you're looking to just start getting getting into powerlifting, you don't necessarily like have to get a coach right from the beginning. Um, it's just all about trying to like, I don't know, get in the gym and start doing those SPD movements. And then eventually down the line, like, yes, it is nice to hire a coach because they're going to pay attention to your programming in detail and make sure that you're you know you're on the right track especially like if you're signing up for meets and whatnot but really like the goal of like your first meet is to just have fun not to take it too seriously like don't get into the whole like i need to hurt, like hit a certain like a certain number um you just like have to go in to the meet with the mentality like you're gonna do your best and put it all on the platform and that's all you can really ask for especially like when you're doing all three lifts trying to pr them all at once in one day it can be fatiguing so like say you train just doing one or two movements a day like you might not necessarily get to hit those numbers in a meet just like like you do in training if that makes sense it's just all about having fun and I guess build up on those beginner gains <laughs> first but yeah like for sure would recommend like getting a coach down the line but like initially like there's plenty of programs out there that you can like easily run and like just to try to like start doing the movements so and getting them down pat but eventually once you get a coach like I said they're going to dial in your programming, they're gonna start to help you like dial in your technique because after a certain point you're gonna max out yourself and you need that like second eye. For the first like year, year, year and a half of my career, I pretty much coached myself um, with the help like I guess of a few friends like with their second eye. Then after that I got a coach, I started things get, I started to start improving more just because I had that second eye, that, that coach really like paying attention to the details and um, yeah that's where I kind of like am here today, been training, gosh. A little over four years, maybe four and a half, can't, can't quite remember, but yeah, it's crazy, like, if you, like, if you, like, set your mind to something, like, what, just what you can accomplish, so you just have to stay consistent with it, stay dedicated, don't make excuses, and just get the work in.